Good morning, everybody. It's March 19th, 2024. And today we're going to go back to a couple of decodes we did from 20 and 20, 2020 and 2021. We're also going to talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, Passover and unleavened bread, which many of you might be interested in listening to. Now, why are we going back to 2020 and 2021 talking about a couple of re-uploads? Well, each of these videos is about snake venom. Snake venom as a cure. And one of these videos is about an eclipse and snake venom and a cure. And these are all events that seem to be happening now or in recent, the last two to three years. And so it's important that we go back to these videos and take a look at this stuff. Now, one of these videos that I'm going to show you is from the movie Snake Eyes with Nicolas Cage. It was filmed at the Taj Mahal. So obviously, Snake Eyes are the snake venom. You could also look at Snake Eyes as the two puncture wounds of the snake's fangs which are essentially hollow needles to inject things into people, filmed at the Taj Mahal. Now, this decode, Snake Eyes, aired a few months before the vaccine came to market. So we're going to take a look at that first. This is a short one. And then we're going to get into a decode that we did from 2021 from the sci-fi series, The 100. And it's all about an eclipse and a literal snake's venom used as a cure. So, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Let's get into this, you guys. This is wild. Now, during 18 months after the April 2nd, 1990 opening, when the casino, this is the Taj Mahal Casino. Let's let this play through. I've turned the sound out just because it's got some soundtrack on it. Let's see if we could play this now. Lincoln and I, Lincoln and I, Lincoln and I have come to an understanding. Now, there have always been mob ties to Trump. There was the whole concrete gate where Trump Tower was actually made with mob concrete, which suggests that there was some kind of trade-off, some kind of compromise going on there because the mob controlled the concrete. And of course, Trump Tower is made out of pure concrete. But there's always this rolling snake eyes thing. Trump's first casino partners had alleged mob ties. Let's keep playing this here. You about all this Cyrus? Cyrus? Now, there's a Cyrus character in the movie Snake Eyes, and of course, there's been associations between Trump and Cyrus. Remember, this was filmed at Taj Mahal, his casino. Cyrus? Cyrus? You gotta keep positive! Let's see, when we have these little visits... Cyrus? You gotta keep positive! Did you notice the mark on the right hand? High voltage electricity. The mark on the right hand, high voltage electricity, electromagnetism. Now, at this point, there's a battery that's mentioned in this scene as well. Let's see, when we have these little visits. These are the copper top batteries, human batteries. All of this was in the Snake Eyes film. I allow you, I permit you, I give you the opportunity to pay for all the extra police work that you create! Gee, that's a new one, mister. Well, you are sunshine on a stormy, stormy, stormy. They mentioned Stormy, of course. There was the Stormy Daniels affair. And the woman in Snake Eyes is named Stormy. Or they mentioned the name Stormy, which is a rare name. 
poor thing to say. Hey, you should work in the casino. I'm gonna. I mean, I yeah. wanna. This is a sort of, you know, okay. temporary. Let me make a few phone calls. Would you? Yeah. Do you know how to deal blackjack? No. I'm on TV. I'm on TV. Come on, Rick, for Christ's sake, I'm on in 30 seconds, will ya? I think people would vote for this face, don't you? Yeah. I think people would vote for this face, don't you? Yeah. yeah. See, Fine that's, that's the only way you get anywhere. I think people would vote for this face. So there's this voting presidential. So essentially, Nicholas Gage is playing a Trump like character. Let's keep watching here. These days, you gotta get your big fat smile all over the tube. Hi, Rick Santor. He's obnoxious, and that's the whole Trump meme as well. Let's keep watching. Well, hello, Richard Santor. Hi. Hello? Oh, yeah, no, hi, baby. <clears throat> no, I just had something stuck in my throat. Lincoln, how you something stuck in my throat that's another tell to the future of what they knew was coming the snake eye bite of the vaccines doing? good to see you again eh? there was a lincoln character as well this is from ipet goat 2 which was the five dollar bill on the chin of this weird demon that appeared in ipet goat 2 so there's there's a lincoln connection to that And this was actually a $5 bill that came out. Uh, I forget what they call these, but there's some kind of a note. It was a special note to commemorate something. And on this particular note, this $5 note, there is Fame and her trumpet. Fame is an ancient Roman goddess with her trumpet. And we've got Apollo Sol Invictus and Apollo's father, Zeus. So this is just connecting, uh, uh, basically connecting Lincoln to Apollo. What, am I supposed to know you? Lincoln, you're hurting my feelings, and after I drop ten grand on you... You know what, I, I think it would show more respect. That's against Lincoln. And secretaries expressing outrage over the sales of missile systems and other weaponry to Israel. Sales of missile systems and other weaponry to Israel. Now, weapon sales to Israel have been going on for a very long time. But it seemed to peak during the Trump presidency. And it was actually part of this peace agreement in 2020. And they, uh, Netanyahu presented Trump with a wish list of $8 billion in weapons that he'd wanted to purchase. The purchases would be paid for by Israel using money in addition to the $38 billion in military aid to Israel set to receive from the United States between 2019 through 2028. And then this goes back to the Abraham Accord. Many of you remember this quote-unquote peace deal. What happened to the peace deal? Uh, right now, uh, Palestine is not enjoying any kind of peace deal. So what was that really about? Thirty-five. He hits the floor thirty-eight. Here they are in the Taj Mahal. Floor thirty-eight. What floor? Thirty-five. What? What? Then they hit thirty-five. So what we have is thirty-three and fifty-eight. And this Snake Eyes released on August 7th, 98. And this is, uh, let's see, Friday. Oh, so this date in the Hebrew calendar is the 15th of Av in the Hebrew year. 5758 is when this released. So this year, uh, 1998, was loaded with symbolism. 57, 58 was 1998. 
there's the Taj Mahal hallway. Again, this building does not exist anymore. This casino does not exist anymore. There you can see the concentric hallways, everything laid in, in carpet and gold. Thirty-five seventeen. It's my room, damn it! Hi. Please, just look for yourself. Okay. She has the entrance. I need you to look at the heat flashes here at the moment of impact. Two impacts. So you could argue that it says first impact and second impact. You could argue that these could be the first and second shots or the snake eyes, which is two single dice rolled creating one and one dot on the dice, the single number one on the dice. Well, because they rigged it, Mr. Secretary. They're talking about rigged fights, rigged elections, rigged buildings, rigged explosives. Well, because they rigged it, Mr. Secretary. If the air guard had made full intercept like it's supposed to, there would be one dot, but there's two every time. The target blows up, but the air guard never gets within 10 meters. Of it. Then why would the target blow up? They put on a fireworks display for you. The air guard doesn't work. And the company knows the system doesn't work, but they're pushing it through anyway. That sounds like the events of 9-11. The air guard doesn't work. It's rigged to not work. The planes never get there in time. Let's listen to that back through again. Because that's pretty specific. The guard never gets within 10 meters. Of it. Then why would the target blow up? If the air guard had made full intercept like it's supposed to, there would be one dot, but there's two every time. The target blows up, but the air guard never gets within 10 meters. Then why would the target blow up? They put on a fireworks display for you. The fireworks display, which was the fake explosions. The air guard doesn't work, and the company knows the system doesn't work, but they're pushing it through anyway. Well, because they rigged it, Mr. Secretary. Well, because they rigged it, Mr. Secretary. Started playing political games with real soldiers' lives. He forced Powell into an early test. He positioned the system to fail because he didn't want to pay for Charles Kirkland was a politician, a baby kisser, not a soldier. Snake eyes. The house wins. The house always wins. Then we have specific references to the Trump win. Donald Trump rolls snake eyes in Iowa further comparing him and tying him to this movie, which was all about him. Ain't no way, Kevin. You got snake eyes. Put the gun down, sir. Drop the gun, sir. Today in Brighton Park, Richard Santoro. Now, the character's name is Richard Santoro. And found a connection to Santorum. Atlantic City's new police hero received a special Valor Award for heroism. I know you may not want to see it right now, but it's true. It's going to be so different in Atlantic City. <laughs> the whole system is being dumped. Company Off to the left, you see the tip of the spear. The tip of the spear. He's being completely restructured. There are going to be all sorts of indictments up and down the administration. And... Things have really the fake indictments changed. You know, they say back two, three hundred years ago, pirate city's new police hero received a special valor award for heroism. I know you may not want to see it right now, but it's true. It's going to be so different in Atlantic City. <laughs> the whole system is being dumped. Companies being completely restructured. There are going to be all sorts of indictments up and down the administration, and. Things have really changed. You know, they say back two, three hundred years ago, pirates put phony lighthouses right out by those big rocks. Ships would set a course by the lights, crash on the rocks, then everybody go out and rob them blind. Only one thing's changed since then. Lights are brighter. So they're obviously talking about the honey traps, the fake lights, the fake lighthouses. Everybody goes out and then they're all scooped up by the deep state, which is exactly what's happening right now with these cryptocurrency traps set, which is exactly what's happening with the crapper hole traps set. This is unbelievable. 
Then we get to the end of the film. So Sin City, where you are king. I'm going to turn off the volume on here. Probably this, this video is probably loaded with copyright already. Let's see. Okay, it looks like we're okay. No copyright notices yet. Okay, let's keep going with this. Unbelievable. This was in 2020 I decoded this film. So they're apparently they're laying some concrete and they're pulling up. What are they pulling up here? Is this the spear? This is one of the pieces of the spear that I just showed you in the background. One of the pillars of the spear. And uh, here I show the inside of the apprentice boardroom. And here you see the corona of the sun in a mirror. Nine chairs on one side and one main chair on the other. So that's 19. And here they're raising up this column, the raising of the Jed. This is an ancient Egyptian practice. Raising the column, raising the Jed. It has to do with the Kundalini. This is what this was all about. Now there was something inside, if I remember correctly, there was something inside the concrete at the end of this film. Oh, here's Sin City. Why did I circle that? I don't remember. Oh. Meredith Brooks, June 12th, 1958. There's that number 58 again from the song that ends this. And inside, I think, is some kind of ruby. I think that was from the ring of somebody in the film. So... That is Snake Eyes. Let me check in with you guys. And then the next decode that I'm going to show you, we did a year later in 2021. It's from a science fiction series called The 100. And it's all about 100 children that fall to a planet. And because everyone's up in the space station, because it's the last of humanity in this giant space station trying to survive because the, the Earth has been overcome by radioactivity so in order to survive they all go up into the space station but they realize they're running out of resources so they have to send people down to the planet down to earth well they end up sending 100 children down to earth and they fall near this mountain is all this sounding familiar they fall near a mountain which is much like mount herman instead of the 100 it's the 200 fallen angels that fall and then at this point in one of the episodes of the 100 someone gets sick during an eclipse and they're given snake venom as a cure now before we get into this i want to talk about the topic of the passover because yes we've been talking a lot about the eclipse but there's also a passover that's fast approaching and by some calculations some people believe the Passover falls on Nisan 14 in the Hebrew calendar or April 22nd is when the Passover happens a few weeks after the eclipse. And at least one person was triggered by the fact that Rhea and I were making yeast for pizza, crust, and sourdough. And I rebuke all spirits of jealousy and backbiting. Yeast was a perfectly acceptable food source in the Bible. It was only abstained from during Passover week as a symbol of the coming purity of Jesus offering his offering of his body as the, the unleavened bread. The rest of the time, you were allowed to eat yeast. In fact, I pulled up all the Bible verses on yeast just to demonstrate this. And... It's important also to note that the Old Testament is tied to the New Testament through this bread, which Jesus would offer as his body, this unleavened bread. And of course, Jesus told us to eat unleavened bread during the Passover as a symbol of his pure body. Now, yeast was also talked about in the Bible 
to symbolize the sin entering the church. A little bit of sin that can corrupt the whole church. And we're going to read through some of these Bible verses just so we can get an idea of what this was all about. And of course, Rhea and I will be abstaining from leavened bread and yeast during the Passover week. Just out of respect for the Old Testament laws. Not that I think people have to, but it's something we choose to do. In fact, we recognize the Passover every single Sabbath. We take a moment in the morning and we partake because Jesus said, keep doing the Passover in remembrance of me. He told us, he didn't tell us how often we needed to, but he told us to keep doing it. So you could do it as often as you want, or you can do it once per year during the Passover, right? So let's read some of these passages about yeast before we get into the second decode that I want to show you, just because it kind of ties into all this. So 1 Corinthians 5, 6 your boasting is not good. Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole lump? So yeast is used to describe the little bit of sin that enters the church. Yeast is what makes bread rise. It can multiply. It also gives bread taste. Here in 1 Corinthians it says, Purge out the old yeast that you may be a new lump, even as you are unleavened. For indeed Christ our Passover has been sacrificed in our place. Therefore, here's another scripture. Therefore, let us let us keep the feast not with old yeast, neither with the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Deuteronomy, no yeast shall be seen with you in your borders for seven days. Neither shall any of, of the flesh which you sacrifice the first day at evening, remain all night until the morning. So this was obviously a throwback to the Old Testament. Okay, And so having yeast not during these seven days infers that the rest of the time outside the seven days there was yeast. Again, Exodus, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away yeast out of your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that shoal shall be cut off from Israel. So these were Old Testament laws pointing forward to Jesus' final sacrifice of his body as the bread with no leaven in it. So they were already starting this practice thousands of years before Jesus was even born. But... It's only during the Passover where you're supposed to not eat yeast. So I want to be clear here because apparently some people got triggered that we were growing yeast for pizza dough. <laughs> wow. I, I don't even realize why I even have to explain this, but apparently there were some triggered people. So, so this is what it is. Now, the Bible also describes yeast as sneaking into the church. Okay. And it's used as a metaphor for that as well. A little yeast grows through the whole lump. Okay. And then, so there's a couple other New Testament scriptures that talk about this. Meanwhile, this is in Luke. But a multitude of many thousands had gathered together, so much so they had trampled on each other. He began to tell his disciples, first of all, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. It is like yeast which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. Okay? So I want to be clear here about this. There's scriptural uh, confirmation that even the Israelites who God loved and walked with ate yeast except during the Passover. So I wanted to be clear about all that as well. And now we can get... Let me check in with you guys and then we'll get into this 100 about snake venom being a cure. And I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on all this as well, you guys. And so I'll pop in the chat just for a little bit. See what you guys are up to. Good morning. All right. Yeah, Carrie says, I make sourdough by collecting the natural yeast from there. Yeah, that, and that's absolutely what we did as well. Uh-oh, somebody has had a frozen video. Okay. 
Yes, yeast is a metaphor in the Bible. Absolutely. And the only ones forbidden from eating the yeast were the ancient Israelites. And during the Passover week, they had a specific covenant with God. And obviously, maybe out of respect, um, in our modern times, during the week of Passover, we could do the same. Not, you know, abstain from um, bread. And of course, when you're taking the Passover bread, that should be unleavened bread as well. Absolutely. Ali says, have you seen the movie Venom? Yes, we decoded the movie Venom about the pipes and the black goo and Spider-Man. That's here on the channel. All right. Now, let's get into this other video here. And this one is very important. Because this is all about the 100. Let's start playing this year. Let me fix this here. Turn off the chat replay for you guys. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. A couple of clarifications on yesterday's show before we get into the decode. The Feast of Trumpets is in five days. We actually in spring, also from people that were unaware to recognize a feast or basically programmed by it. So they all have the same themes running through them. Now, let's get into this here. I've got a montage pulled up that you guys have not seen yet. Why? Because anytime I upload one of these montages, it gets hit with a copyright. For some reason, when we do it on a live show, it doesn't. So that's what we're going to do here. Now, this is from 2021, and we were already talking about eclipses and snake bites. Let's keep watching here. Now, you've heard me say very early on in this whole spamdemic that the fangs of the serpent are like the two doses. The two fangs, the two doses. Fangs are hollow. And... This is the snake bite. So I wasn't surprised to see all this play out in the series, the 100. Now, what you're looking at here is the end of season six. And some of what you're going to see here is the beginnings of the last season, which is season seven. Season seven finished airing a few months before the potion came to market. Now, I'm going to start calling it the potion because that's what KJ calls it. And I think that that probably works. KJ's scariest movie ever. We're going to start calling it the potion instead of the sticker. And, uh, the point is that the, the symbolism that you're going to see, all the symbolism in this trailer that you're going to see next, came before the potion came to market. Now, some of what you're going to see next not only came before the potion, but it also came way back before the pandemic even started. I'll try to specify that as we go through this, as this timeline meets up with our timeline. So let me get you caught up on the plot. So the remnants of humanity who had to escape Earth because Earth was wiped out twice, they land on this new planet. And the planet is called Sanctum. And they realize that they're all coming down with some strange illness. And it occurs during this double sun eclipse. Now, you can see it here. As this second sun is starting to approach the other one, to eclipse here. And, of course, what are eclipses? They're corona mass ejections, are they not? Is what you can see. During the eclipses, right? Now, in the series, the trees release this toxin. And the only cure to this madness that people get is the bite of a snake. Except, the snake doesn't bite with its fangs. It injects with a needle-like tongue. Is all this starting to sound familiar? Watch. Oh my god. So, one of their... Um, I guess soldiers, or whatever, gets you know is exposed to this toxin. He's gonna die, and they pull out this snake, and the snake sticks his tongue into his side. Trust me, I know that the venom degrades too quickly to deliver it in any other form. We call it kapasha. Means hideous snake. Chinese. Of course, it's Chinese, right? Now again, this scene you're looking at here was from before the spam demic. So it's weird that they mentioned Chinese here, and there's a snake. Amazing, isn't it? Its curative properties were discovered during one of the earliest red suns. It's working. Now, what you're looking at here is the original space station that started the entire 100 series. The space station was called the Ark, and at its base was a ring. And then what looks to be like a projected needle come through the ring. To me, this reminds me of the Space Needle in Seattle. 
looks a lot like a needle. And these were some drawings that a girl made, some like prophetic drawings. Why did you draw these? Your pasteur bit him. The toxin from the seaweed had no effect. <laughs> So of course they're talking about toxon. We all know what toxon is. It's in it's the Greek word for toxin, but also means a ribbon or bow. Like a, it could be a bow and arrow, but it could also be a ribbon, a piece of ribbon. And um, so let's keep watching here. Poison made the demon Gabriel believe he could walk on water. <coughs> He's breathing. Well then, Killian. So I'm hope you guys are seeing the similarities here. Walking on water, false messiahs, false prophets, eclipses. No. Lock them up. Lock them up. So, these are the uh, the 100 landing on the planet from Earth, and the other people, this guy, are the people that lived on Sanctum. And we'll get into more of what all that means in a minute. But what you're going to hear next, and this is again, before this pandemic, they talk about lockdowns and lock them up listen closely lock them up why is sanctum on lockdown lockdown isn't enough if someone is hiding them clark's daughter we have her in custody with most of the others but two of them are still at large we believe they're in sanctum which is why we're on lockdown so the clear references to references to lockdown now when you take any one of these elements then it means nothing but when you take them all together lockdowns you're going to see masks next next as well when you take them all together and toxins and and then you know serpents tongues you know injecting people when you take it all together the, a very clear picture emerges and the clear picture is is foreshadowing foreknowledge knowledge of events that have not happened yet now if this happened in one series uh, even then you couldn't prove anything with that but we are seeing the same themes running throughout every single series leading up that we've covered anyway leading up to the pandemic unbelievable foreshadowing it's like they were programming us now what are we going to see next year well you're going to see masks now these scenes that you're going to see aired in the middle of 2019 a full year before real masks and real lockdowns would happen that guy has a mask he's got he's wiping dust off it's a christmas type of scene this is when the whole spamdemic would start months after this scene aired during christmas and remember, the vaccine also came to market in Christmas 2020. Earth before the bombs. Before the bombs, he says. They're in a diner. See, it's obviously Christmas. Another mask. The middle of 2019 this aired, you guys. And another mask. Is it sinking... Is it sinking in yet? Now, we all know that the word for gift means poison. Does it not? It's a dome. Now, you just heard her say it's a dome. So now we're going to get into the shape of the universe. We've talked a lot about this, haven't we? Those of you that follow the channel. Lots of talk about the universe, what it, what it, the shape of it. Uh, clues in our own anatomy even of what the shape of the universe is like so let's get into more of this our first clue that they're going to talk about the shape of the universe which oftentimes they do is this first mention of a dome firmament they call it a dome but it's actually symbolic of the firmament now what you're going to see next are portals trees as portals and you're also going to see comparing our limbs, our body limbs, to tree limbs. Watch. I sent you in under, leaving only a hand exposed to temporal flare. Though not fully, or be fossilized like the trees. She's talking about the tree limb and this gnarled hand. What happened is, Octavia, this woman whose hand you're looking at, gets caught in a tree portal. And it causes her to age, her, her arm to age much, much faster than the rest of her body. And of course... The research we've done on this channel, portals are shaped like tree trunks. Spiral tree trunks. Water is the vehicle or the carrier. And there are some obscure references to water being where souls are stored or memory is stored. Now, of course, God has control of all that on a supernatural level. But I believe that 
when the end is gets here and the scrolls are open and everything is disclosed, I, I believe this will be the case. So water is the carrier. It's almost like how a tree takes water up through its roots, travels up to the top of the tree. Well, that's how uh, we go through portals. And this is why an umbilical cord, a child's umbilical cord, is like a tree trunk. And when you when they cut off the umbilical cord, they actually call it a trunk. And that's what birds us into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is where we're stuck. We're stuck here after Eve entered the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if you think about this, I'm interrupting myself here. When you're born into this reality, you're born into sin, the Bible says. Well, you come in through a tree trunk. It's the birth canal. And believe it or not, the birth canal actually twists as the child comes out, just like a tree does. The branches of the women's female anatomy is where the fruit is, which is where all the ovaries and the eggs are, which act as fruit. And this is why the Bible says, be fruitful, be fruitful when you have children, right? And fill the earth. All, right, so all this starting to make sense now. We're born in through a tree. It's a portal into the knowledge of good and evil. Why would God do that? Well, we're stuck here because of the original sin. So everyone's born into sin. We're all born into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in this reality. The only way out is through another portal, another narrow gate, which is through Christ's sacrifice, through belief in him, baptism, the gospel. That's how we get out of this portal. God made it simple. Believe on the Lord and you shall be saved. That he made it really simple. There isn't some trick to it. You believe, you, you repent, you're baptized, and you go through Jesus' gate into the new reality, the new heaven and the new earth. Let's keep watching here. We got stuck here in the world of sin, uh, cut off from the rest of the garden, which includes the tree of life. We're cut off from that for now. The only way back is through the narrow gate, which is another tree trunk, which is through Jesus Christ. And notice a child is suspended in water while it develops. That's the, the conduit. That's the uh, the vehicle, amniotic fluid. So again, remember, water is the conduit. It's the vehicle. And this is why probably Jesus told us to be baptized, submerged in water. It's, it's symbolic. I know there's a message afoot saying it's not necessary to be baptized to be saved. Who would even want to question that? Who would even want to challenge the simple act and bring up a discussion like that? That right there is a spirit of defiance. It's a spirit of defiance, of doubt, of questioning, of rebellion. Just do it. It's easy. If Jesus said to do it, just do it. Now, am I the person to say that, oh, if you didn't get baptized, you're not going to be saved? Of course not. I'm not going to place that judgment on someone because I don't know. And yes, the thief to the side of Jesus at the crucifixion was probably not baptized. But guess what? He was standing right next to Jesus. So there could have been a supernatural baptism that Jesus did for him so that he could enter in through the paradise portal, right? Beware of backbiters. People who turn on you are triggered or are seeding doubt or trying to create discord in the Christian community by one reason or another because they feel like they're not being listened to beware of people like that that is of the spirit of the devil let's keep watching here good amniotic amnesia the forgetting forgetting of where we came from because God knew us in the womb we probably knew him too but then we forget when we're born fascinating notice now you're going to see all this play out everything I just told you is all going to play out in these next scenes here but you'll notice that wisdom sometimes comes out of the mouth of babes, right? They say just profound things sometimes. Sometimes they even talk about seeing and knowing Jesus, right? Isn't that amazing? Well, maybe that's because they're remembering that they knew God in the womb. Oh, it's spreading. So this guy uh, tries to heal her hand by getting sap out of these trees. Here it comes. Teresa? Buying time. Buying time for your friends to come and save you. I put your time in the bottle. Now, the tree sap is like the tree blood, isn't it? It's the tree's circulatory system. So they're talking about time, of course, and that ends up being what happens when they pass through these tree portals. Time is changed. Uh, it's experienced at slower and faster rates, depending on where you're at. 
And that's what it's like here. We are in a certain timeline here, in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We don't live forever. We have a finite life. Um, and But then in heaven, very close to the tree of life, God says a thousand years is a day for him. So, what's the verdict? Splitting seems so slow. <laughs> So we talked a lot about tree trunks, right? The devil's tower, devil's post pile, these, these twisted uh, spiral tree trunks that seem to be cut off all around the planet. Well, these were once portals. They probably connected Earth to the Garden of Eden. I believe the Garden of Eden is actually like above us or at the edges of us. We're cut off from it. Two angels were posted at the entrance to the Garden of Eden. And we can no longer get there because we've been cut off. And there up there is the tree of life. And then above that is heaven. We're at the lower levels of, of our reality. These portals take us through, but we're cut off from them for now. But they're shaped like trees. Something else came through. Welcome to the party. So that here he's talking about something else coming through. These are in fact portals. Let's keep going. Octavia lost her memory too. Must be a result of moving through the anomaly. So there's the losing of the memory, the amnesia, amniotic fluid. What's the anomaly? Now I'm going to interrupt myself again. We're going to have a short discussion about the probable makeup of the universe. The garden was full of trees. Correct? Now that we know that trees are portals or world portals to worlds, the worlds would be the branches of the tree, right? That would be the whole world experience, all the laws of physics, all of the fruit born into the branches of the tree. When you look up in the sky, what do you see at night during time-lapse panoramic photography at the equator? You see a giant tree trunk coming up from the middle of the earth, spinning around like the branches of a tree. And below the horizon, you would see the roots spinning back around onto the tree. So essentially there's a giant tree in the sky and all the stars in it are like the fruit. And guess what? Those are symbols, gifts of all of us. We each have a star in heaven that represents our next life that we will have. It's a beacon of hope and righteousness. You literally look up in the night sky during time-lapse panoramic photography and you can see the trunk of the tree and the branches spinning around with all the stars in it as the fruit of the tree. It's literally unbelievable once you come to these realizations. You're standing on the, the earth and you look like a tree with your trunk and limbs and bearing fruit and setting down roots and you look up in the sky and there's a tree in the night sky. Now let's keep watching here. There's more to this. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me back up here. Let's take this a step further. We're in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We're in a reality where, guess what? It's duality. We're in the duality reality, aren't we? And, but there are other realities. Those are the trees of the garden. We're cut off from the portal to get to those trees. Think of it as a string of pearls. Each pearl is its own enclosed tree. And in order to get to the next one, you have to go through these narrow passages that we've been cut off from because of sin entering this world. We're trapped here until Jesus returns, right? So what else could we derive from this? Well, we can derive that the Garden of Eden, which is the kind of was the pinch point, it was the place where you could access all the trees, right? We're cut off from that. So think of the Garden of Eden as the main room. The Garden of Eden is the main room to all the other trees. And this is why the New Jerusalem will have pearls at its gates. The gates are the, probably the portals out to back out to the other trees of the garden. So we can once again experience that. Now, no one really talks about what heaven's going to be like. Do you notice that? When you go on the internet and you type in heaven, 
notice go hit click images and you'll notice the pictures are very subdued kind of kind of just arbitrary a lot of them are just animations there are no profound images or concepts of heaven and the devil has done that on purpose this is why Jesus had to remind us to keep our eyes fixed on heaven because the devil is constantly trying to give you a very boring view of heaven that we're all going to be in robes just worshiping God and that's going to be our whole day is just saying holy 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 right that's what they want us to believe heaven's going to be like they don't want you to know that there will be infinite possibilities of how to fill your day and then there won't ever be a moment of boredom because why would God put boredom in heaven? He would not do that. That would go directly against what heaven's supposed to represent. Boredom is a construct of our fallen nature. That's what boredom is, not in perfect bodies and perfect minds. Where we'll be able to have instant recall, where you'll be able to already know how to ride a motorcycle or plant a garden without any effort or thought, any struggle in your brain. It will just come naturally, but nobody's talking about that, not even the churches. And so God wants us to have an imagination about what heaven's going to be like. That is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. God wants us to imagine what life is going to be like outside of this broken, fallen tree. Amen? Let's keep watching here. It's shocking. There's the anomaly, but it's actually a bridge or a gate or a portal. Obviously sh shaped like a pillar or a tree. Now here's Octavia, and she ends up going through the portal and comes up through the water. Pillar of light um, coming up through the water. And then they're going to dovetail this scene with this other woman named Dioza. And she gives birth in this place where Octavia goes to, which is called the Garden. Now this is from season 7. So this is after the spam demic began. But the episode is called the Garden. And Dioza and Octavia run into the tree portal and they find themselves in this alternate reality where time goes by much slower. Now, let's play this out and you can see this. So that's Dioza and the other woman is Octavia. Now, in the previous season, these two characters described themselves as two serpents in Eden. I believe it was in season five because they both have done very dark and evil things. And I think the quote was, Eden didn't stand a chance with two serpents in the garden or something like that. So now they find themselves together in a place called the garden in the episode titled The Garden, which is one of the worlds that, that you can enter as you go through these portals. Now we'll get into the time portals more in the next decode. I'm hoping the next decode will be our last. But basically what they're depicting here is the metaphor between childbirth and portals and trees. Think about it. The placenta is a tree. It's a placental tree. You're in like, you're basically in a lake by the tree when you're in the womb. You said they used the bridge. Well, I'm assuming that's what we call the anomaly, a, a bridge between worlds. Is there a way to control it here too? So this is the anomaly. They're calling them the stones. Actually, these are called the stones. What they are is they look like a spiral globe. So again, this would be like a metaphor of a tree trunk. This is what a tree trunk does. Spirals up, and turns around and twists and grows upward. And these become like gates or portals. Now, I don't believe in universes in the way that science teaches. But what I do believe is that what they call universes are actually trees of the garden. God said there were many trees in the garden. And there's only one way back to these trees. These rooms with many mansions. And of course, that's through Jesus Christ. He says, I am the narrow gate. He was talking about exactly what he said. But how? What are the dynamics of it? What are the, What is the description of it? Well, imagine you're going through a narrow tree trunk. I used to play down here as a kid. Little did I know it was a bridge to the stars. No need for spaceships or, or cryo or mine drives. You could explore an entire universe. 
I don't believe it. Black hole, of course. That's why time is so accelerated here. Can you fast forward? Just Should you be walking around? So, they're obviously talking about black holes. And again, what is what is behind that? What is the spiritual aspect behind what they describe as a black hole? Well, what is a black hole? It's a twisted tree trunk. That's exactly what it is. So, there's some truth to it, but they think they can get there and they think they could break through the ferment. So, they make us believe all that, but that's not the case. There's only one way, you guys. The Bible tells us the only way out of this tree that we're in now. Oh, I just squeeze them. Now, in the Bible, children are called fruit. And after she gives birth, you get more and more confirmations as she says, I push something out the size of a watermelon through the size of a grape is what she's going to say here. Oh, I just squeeze something the size of a watermelon out of something the size of a grape. Now, how does that happen? Through another tree trunk. What do you mean, Casey? The birth canal is a tree trunk. Okay, you notice it, people always say birth is a miracle. It really is. You're taking this massive child and squeezing it through the tiniest hole. Well, that's that would be a miracle right before your eyes. You're watching it. And it's, a, and it's an analogy and a metaphor of the greater universe. Now, some people are like maybe saying, Casey, what are you talking about? Go back to the Bible. Here's what I want you to do after the show. If you have any doubts about this, here's a simple Bible study. Go to Bible Gateway. Dot com King James Version if you want type in the word tree do a search for the word tree and I want you to read the uh, I think there may be a hundred to two hundred verses that all include the word tree read through them then I want you to take and then I want, I want you to read them from front to back from Genesis all the way to Revelation I don't know if trees mentioned in Revelation but then the picture will emerge you'll be like whoa there are analogies to people as trees and someone's eyes were open and they could see people that look like trees and wow there were trees in the garden and wow, one of the pharaohs was compared to a great tree that all the, the cities of earth were living in. And it shaded, or it shaded all of the uh, cities of earth. They were under its shade. And it goes on and on and on. And then after that, I want you to do the same search, but use the word fruit. And you will see the fruit compared to the womb and fruitfulness. Fruit is in the trees, you guys. And then it will all make sense that this is the structure. This is the framework. Trees and fruit are the framework of our entire reality. That's why we are shaped like trees, limbs, you have trunk, you have a crown of your head. You set down roots when you go somewhere. You have a family tree and it goes on and on and on. Now, here's what I expect is going to happen here. You're probably thinking, why are we looking at this stuff to gather bits of truth? Well, this truth is already exists. It's already in the Bible. Okay. It's just that through the paradigm of our religious experience, we were never disclosed these truths. In other words, we read the Bible through certain eyes because that's the paradigm that's been set up for us through our Christian experience. These deeper secrets were not revealed to us until this point in history. So it's not that we're looking at this stuff to find truth. We're simply seeing the truth for what it is and seeing things on the spiritual level that the devil already knows that he's probably going to use some of these truths that have been held back from us to try to deceive us so that when the Antichrist comes, he's speaking signs and wonders... What is, what's the first thing he's going to say? Wow, you know, you've been, you guys have been Christian your whole life, but that's a lie. And I have proof because look how I read the Bible. I'm showing you these deeper truths, the truth about the trees. And everyone's going to be in awe, like if they've heard it for the first time, right? And it's going to be reinforced by all of the programming that they put in your mind over the last hundred years of entertainment media. You see why we have to look at this stuff now and reveal it now before the Antichrist comes and tries to reveal it as this is the first time anyone's seen any of this. And wow, look, he's going to think he's so amazing and people are going to be like, wow, that's some deep knowledge. Well, the knowledge was already there. It's just it's been held back from us because the devil rules this world. And he's given us a form of godliness and a form of religion and a form of Christianity, but it has no power because they were already sold out. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. So this is why it's important to look at this stuff now. You get to a part in this uh, season where they start, they, they reveal that they're sacrificing to these trees. What they do is they uh, they think that in order to maintain their divinity, that they have to put these children and people down at the base of these trees, and then the roots grow all over the trees and consume the person. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, I'm going to stop myself here because now you're starting to see the juxtaposition between what I just described and how the devil 
gives his version of what Christ did. Christ was hung on a tree. A cross is made out of a tree. Whether you believe he was hung on a tree or a cross, it's essentially spiritually the same thing. So, what's the devil going to do? His He's going to do his version, which is tree worship and sacrificing things to trees, right? Do you see the juxtaposition now? Let's keep playing this here. Did you think I wouldn't notice my offering was going missing? So, the people that founded Sanctum, this, this planet, and settled it, they're called primes and they're basically humans, but they found a way hundreds of years ago to basically genetically modify their blood against radiation, which then turned the blood black. So they genetically modified their own blood so they could tolerate radiation better. For some reason, this affected to their genetics. It was then handed down, but only certain people would be born with this black blood. So what they would do, these primes, is they had this memory chip in the back of their neck that stored all their memories. And as their bodies begin to get older, they would transfer their chip into a new body. Problem is, is that it would wipe out the other person's brain. So they would basically snatch the person's body. Now, the only people that they could switch bodies to had to have the black blood too. They had, and there's two ways to get the black blood. They either born with it through genetic chance, or they had to insert it into someone else through this process who didn't have it to begin with that then turned their blood black. But regardless... The person that they possessed had to have the black blood. Is all this starting to sound familiar? I believe that's that's what, what's happening right now. They're converting us to have the blue blood so that the bodies can be more easily possessed. So where do they where does the chip go? It's in the back of their neck in what I call the holy place. Now, you can get to the pineal gland from the back of the neck, but before you get there, there's an image of Christ hanging on the cross in the brainstem. Anatomically, that's what it appears to look like. Literally, these people are trying to fill your temple, the lamp of your body, with darkness, blocking out the light. The two cannot exist together. If you're full of darkness, like Jesus said, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. If your eye is dark, your whole body will be full of darkness. It is written in the New Testament. So, we discovered all this a long time ago, long even before this series came out, that this is how demons do it. This is how they possess people. The human body has to be altered somehow first to make it fit for possession. The question is, how are they altering it? And as I explained in the series, they have to genetically modify the body to prepare it. Let's keep watching. The forest doesn't feed that quickly. You dilute the bloodline, you make it less likely that anyone would bear a host. We have the same blood, Clark. You dilute the bloodline, make it unlikely that someone could bear a host. So that's the inbreeding that they have to do. Uh, black bloods being with black blood so that they can have n new hosts for demon possession. Royal blood. That's why they went out to Delilah. Planet Beta. So we don't even know if it's survival. And finally, this last scene that I have for this trailer is they list the Greek letters as the names of these planets, including Delta, of course. And again, this was 2019 before the spam demic even started. If it isn't, we go for Gamma. Then Delta, then Epsilon. If it isn't, we go for Gamma. Then Delta, then Epsilon. We can access the mind drives of the other teams wirelessly from up here. Assuming there were no other signal sucking anomalies. So let's go back here in the chat as we begin to wrap up here. So that's it, you guys. I'll put a link to both of these videos, these decodes from 2020 and 2021. And I hope that our discussion about yeast and the Passover helped clarify some things for some people in terms of the upcoming eclipse. I had not, not forgotten about the Passover. Again, we do Passover every single weekend. Uh, we just were waiting on the Holy Spirit to get to the discussion, but some people got really upset and triggered and so, again, uh, let's go back into the chat here. What are you guys up to? Let this chat catch up. Thanks, everybody, for showing up today. All right.
Yeah, they are now saying graphene is safe for human consumption. We covered that story yesterday or the day before. So uh, if you're curious about that, uh, we covered that. Prince William, born of a virgin, says pray for peace. All right. Yes, we are not God. No, we are not God. We are we are in these fallen bodies and our only hope is Jesus Christ. There's only one way through the Father and that is through him, says the New Testament. And it's it's basically through grace. We we are sinners every single day. It is only through grace and belief in him that we're saved. We are like dirty, filthy rags, not gods. <laughs> the only way he can exist in us is through Jesus. So that's another great Bible study to do if you're a Bible believer. Um, look at what the Bible says about us as humanity. And uh, don't take my word for it. Go into the Bible and read what it says. What if a woman has a C-section? That's a good question, Canons. Again, this is all symbolic. You're still born into sin, right? So spiritually, we're, we all come through the birth canal or we come through the process of birth. We're, we're basically, it's like fruit falling off of a tree. Think of it that way. Whether it falls through and hits a branch on the way down or, you know, or it falls straight to the ground, essentially, yes. The closest thing we were ever to God was in the womb where God knew us before we could ever sin. Now, think about this for a second. Rhea and I were having a discussion because in the Bible, there is a story in which I believe the Pharisees challenged Jesus and they ask him why, if God is love, then why are children born blind? And Jesus responded that the child is born blind to basically glorify God. Now, what could that possibly mean? Well, if you think about blind people, blind people are essentially very happy people. They are not tempted by sight. One of the temptations is removed from their experience. Think about how many times someone has been tempted by sight. And not only that, it goes all the way back to when we were in the womb, where we had no vision, where we had no sound or ability to hear. Maybe that's what the Bible means when it says we knew God in the womb, because it was a much more spiritual connection rather than the senses we had a spiritual connection because the senses are cut off. And this is why God tells us to fast or go in the wilderness. Because this lack of sensory is what opens you to having and communing with God. When he tells us to pray, he says go into a dark closet or a dark place. Like sensory deprivation. This is where we talk to God. Wow. Wow. So there may be something to that. And I'm not telling everyone to go into a sensory deprivation tank, right? Because that's the devil's version of it. Pumping you full of drugs, just like we saw in the Fringe series, and laying you down in a sensory deprivation tank where you're floating in water. That's dark and evil, right? But... Go back to the Bible and see what it says, how Jesus tells you to pray. He says, go into a closet or a dark place to pray. And that's what we should be doing as Christians. Not like the hypocrites on the street corners. All right, you guys. I know this was a long show. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with some coffee talk headlines i got a lot of headlines to pull pulled up here in the tabs already get you guys caught up i love each and every one of you even the backbiters uh but i do have to protect myself and my new marriage from these kinds of this kinds of toxicity so i will have zero tolerance on the channel
for that kind of talk, okay? I love each and every one of you. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care and be safe, everybody.